Well, good morning. It's Mel Tempest from the Gym Owners Business Podcast. And today I'm speaking to Robert Dyer, Michael Mantel, and Bobby Capiccio. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Mel. Good morning, Mel. Good morning. So we've got an interesting podcast ahead of us today. So let's get things underway. So some of the things that we're going to be discussing are errors that gym owners made in 2017. And um, Robert, I'm, I'm going to ask you this one. Mistakes that we've seen gym owners make in 2017. How can we get the gym owners to correct the errors that they made in 2017? So let's say, for example, they hired the wrong staff member, um, how do we, we move these people on or cancel them? I think you got to back up a little bit first on this one, on first on this one, Mel, because actually the process of hiring someone to be the front and center of the face of your company when you're there and when you're not there is so critical in our industry because we are in a people business. In, in spite of technology, we still have we're still face to face and belly to belly and all those things with, with our customers. So I think the first process for, in my experience has been that I've got to select, obviously, uh, don't throw things at me here, but obviously the right person first and, and to make sure how do you hire the right person? Because I look at this and we, we briefly talked about this in the past is that if I hire somebody, that's not the right fit, that responsibility is on me and my team because everyone on my team interviews that person before I do. And so, therefore, what happens, and I'm just giving you maybe the folks out there an idea, is one of the things that happens is you find out quickly after they've gone through numerous interviews, and um, uh, I'm not in a hurry to hire people. I don't ever let that be the determining factor is how quickly I'm hiring someone, no matter how bad I need them, because I, I've had to deal with what you're referring to myself many years ago, lots of times. So I've had experience in this. So it's, it's really, if you've hired the wrong staff member, that's my fault. That's your fault. That's Bobby's fault, Michael's fault. So we have to go back to our hiring process and determine, are we doing the right things? Um, and all this falls into the human resource department or the human resource area of our business model. And uh, so it's, uh, and also this is a topic, Mel, that, that um, becomes a, a legal issue depending on where you live. How you do this in Texas is going to be different than how you do it in Sydney or in San Diego. It's going to be totally different as, as the laws of, uh, apply. So, uh, so to have them to move on or to counsel them is your question. That's the, right. I just wanted to set that up. I just wanted to set that up as something for people to think about is it's not always person, the employee's fault. It's in how we haven't properly done our due diligence to find out about this person and have, do they really fit into to our team and what our goals are. Do we have similar alignments? You know, so I think all these things, even though it's tedious and it may sound that way to somebody, I've seen lots of gym owners in a, in a hurry just to hire someone to fill a spot. And all they had to have was a heartbeat and uh, they can breathe every once in a while. So we've done that too many times in our industry. And so when you have those, I would say you, you try to cancel them up, you try to upskill them, but if it's not possible, and, and it depends on the reason, Mel, why they're, why they're not the right person. Is it personality? Is it work ethic? Is it timeliness? Is it personal hygiene, what, what is the real issue? So there's so many things that go into this. So just to touch on that, uh, I'd say if you hire the wrong staff member, is you go back to the fundamentals of screening and interviewing and doing the best that you can. Nothing's perfect, but you can do a good job at screening 
a very high percentage of the right people. Um, if they can't be counseled in a reasonable amount of time, it needs to be documented and covered with the person, in my view, and be fair. It has to be fair so that when you walk, if you have to walk away from a situation, a relationship, and that's what an employee employer is, you want to feel good that you've done the best you can to try to make this person work because after all, you hired them or your team hired them. So there's, to me, there's an obligation to try to make it work. And if I can't make it work, I will do it in a very ethical manner with very specific reasons why so it won't come back on me as an employer. Okay, I like that answer, Robert. Let, let's just look at a, a, another issue then. What about if you've had a staff member that's been with you for several years, they're starting to lose focus and lose interest in the job, and you, and you know down deep inside, and this has happened to a lot of club owners, that they're just staying now for the income. How, how do you approach that issue? Well, um, best way I could answer that, Mel, is how I would personally do that and I, we've all had that if we've been in this business as long as all of us have we, we've had to deal with that and you know what I do it the old fashioned way I sit down face to face in privacy I address the issues I make it clear what has to change and what I see in other words I don't want to bore you guys with those type of but it's it, those are relevant things that I have to cover. I can't assume that this is something that they realize. And you know what? Sometimes I found, Mel, that they didn't realize how their interest or things like that have diminished over over time because it, typically mm -hmm. it is over a period of time. Their motivation is down. They're slowly coming to work a little bit later and later and um, wasting a lot of time speaking to one person versus trying to do whatever their job assignment is. So this is, you know, this is something that I address head on and give them an opportunity to fix. And we come out with an agreement. This is what I do. I, I make, I make us both of us come out with a written agreement and I don't make it long and I don't make it complicated, just basic fundamental foundational things in dealing with people all right so really what you're saying is the communication is the key to to having a great team on board and keeping that team on track is that correct always and, and you know mel that's an everyday thing with every person that's absolutely possible it is possible because we're human beings we are but the problem is i'm seeing a lot of club owners that aren't communicating with their teens and what happens is their team not all their team members but their team member might get into a position where they're losing interest they're just going for the wages now you know they are getting there late and they're locking up the club early and what's happening is the gym owner then puts themselves in a position where they go oh my god I can't find staff. I'm going to have to hold on to this person and put up with their habits. And they don't want to sit down and they don't want to have the chat in fear that the staff member is just going to get up and walk out the door and leave them one team member down and the position to fill when they yes. haven't got anybody. You're right, Mel. And you know what, really, even though this is not what you want to hear, the best solution is that that person leave. I actually agree, I can't agree fix. with that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I can't fix everything. I'm sorry it's an inconvenience to somebody that's going to have to pick up the slack, but I'm not putting up with their BS. Yeah. If they don't want to work and they're closing early, they're defying, actually, actually defying me in, in every manner, I'm going to address it in a much different way than I would the first scenario. Awesome. The first one I'm coaching and helping and trying to fix it, trying to help them, give them support. This one here, I'm drawing a line in the sand. Uh, Mel, if you're defying Mel, me, you're gone. Mel, this is Michael. Yes, uh, Michael. May I just comment? Um, I work with a lot of HR teams, human resources team. And one of the things that I find in companies, not just fitness, but I think we can learn from organizational development across the, at a broader level, is there's a turf war that takes place between recruiting new people and HR. 
Um, in other words, dealing with the talent that we have. And what, Robert, you're speaking about so beautifully, I think, is this idea that we need to spend more time looking at the people who are already on board. The recruiting new hires, whether it's new trainers or whatever it might be for a, for a fitness health center gym, is, is important. But I think what we're hearing is how important it is to focus on the staff that you have. Now, if I can just broaden that, the same applies to members. Think about recruiting new members and the gym that focuses on the members that are already there. I assure you, the team that is not um, dealing with its current staff well is not dealing with its current members well. They are mm, well said, not making. Wait, what's that? I'm sorry. I said, well said. Yeah, That's spot on. I, the two go hand in hand. The gym, the gyms will focus on recruitment, and others will focus on what I call the HR approach. Similarly, we need to look at how we are dealing with new clients versus the gold standard, which is retention. Um, and so. You know, do we empower our, our teams with uh, making decisions or do we have to check with the owner manager? Uh, I, I walked up to a gym death front desk and I said, hey, you know, three of your uh, uh, treadmills are not working. And the gal at the front desk was very sweet, said, oh, I'll have, to, I'll have to let the manager know. Can you tell me which ones are not working? <laughs> <laughs> you go do their job. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So I just wanted to draw that analogy for us. So what I'll say to our listeners today, I'll pop all the details of our speakers today at the end of the podcast. I do look forward to having the gentleman on again. And as I said before, thank you very much for your participation today. And I shall speak to you all very soon. Thank, thank you. you very, thank very, you, very much. Thank you for joining the Gym Owners Podcast, sponsored and supported by National Fitness Business Alliance and Gym Click Media. Find Mel Tempest on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Join us next time for the Gym Owners Podcast.